Now, we have several model types which we can use in QML. First off, we have an integer. Well, the integer is just read only. There's no data. This is for when we're creating a, um, some delegate a number of times. We'll look at an example of that shortly. We can also create objects. Um, we are, and we can use JavaScript arrays. The one that we're going to focus on today is going to be the list model because a lot of times when we are templating our stuff in QML, we will use the list model. Uh, in addition to that, there are other QML model types that are available in other QML modules. Uh, location gives us several. We have data visualization. There's other ones in Bluetooth charts and so forth. Now, um, usually when we do model view, our production code will not use QML models. We will use C++ models. Uh, we are not going to be using C++ models today because um, we are focusing on QML. Um, but normally in our production code, we would be using C++ models. And we have a couple available to us. Uh, we have a QString list, um, which is a simple list of uh, QString model. We have a, a variant list, which is like the QString list, but can store variants. Uh, one for objects. And then the one that we will usually use is the... Uh, Q abstract item model. We'll generally subclass that so we can make a model for our specific data. So continuing on, we're going to, to look at the list model. The list model for QML is just a free form list of data, essentially. It has some number of list elements inside of it. And each of these list items has some properties. So if we look at our example here, we have a list model of people. It is made up of list elements. Uh, the, each one of these elements has a name and an address. Um, and it, if we were to think about the way that this uh, list is organized, it would be like what we see up in the top right here, where we have uh, a root item, which is something we're not able to access here. But under that, we have some number of rows. And each one of these list elements would be a row in that, uh, in that list. Now here, we're going to make use of the repeater. Uh, the repeater has two important properties. It has a model and it has a delegate. The model is going to hold the uh, model that the repeater is going to load in full and fetch the elements from. And the repeater uh, is then going to use the object in the delegate property to describe uh, how the data will be shown on the screen. Um, so if we look at our simple example, we've assigned, we've assigned the people list model uh, from our last slide for the model value. And our delegate is a text that has a text, the has its text property set to name, which is the um, one of the data roles from our model. So what will happen is when we uh, display this, we're gonna get a column layout much like you see on the right side here. Now, we can also use model.name for the text property. And this is a good idea to do. And the reason is um, it prevents any collision. So if we have a list model that its property is text or any other property that our object could have, when we go to use that, uh, it won't work because it will try to use the property from the object. So in order to um, make that issue a non-issue, uh, it's good practice to always use uh, model dot before the uh, role that you want to display. And that's, again, because we want to fully qualify. Now, the list model is dynamic, and it does have several functions. Uh, that can be used with it. We have an append, which will take a JavaScript dictionary, which is going to include, you know, the roles and then values for the model's item. We have an insert function, which is going to take an index. And then again, the same um, stuff as append, just where are we putting it? Uh, we have remove, which is going to remove an index uh, that's pre-existing, of course. Uh, and we can move them also by providing where we are moving from and where we are moving to. Uh, and we also have in QML, our data comes from roles. Those roles are what we saw 
uh, like name and address in our people model. But we can also have dynamic roles, but this is strongly discouraged because it's generally, it is much slower than using the static ones. Uh, if you find that you think you need to use dynamic roles, you should instead uh, be using a Q variant map. Now, so far we looked at our list model to provide data, but we can also use a number, uh, like I said earlier. So here is an item uh, that has a component which is a text. If you guys remember from the last session, I mentioned that uh, the components were one way to create our custom items. And these generally happen within the, um, within the file in the context of the model view. So here we're making our component. Our component is just a text item that says um, the item number and then the index. The index is gonna be provided uh, by the model itself. So it's going to provide where in the model that sits. Uh, it's a special um, data role that we have um, available for the number one here. So when we were to, if we were to run this, we would just get a list of item number and then each index. Um, you cannot use more than a hundred million for your number. So um, try to keep that number below a hundred million. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to our channel and check out the free QML programming course on our website. The link is in the description.